Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jehovah, 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 Rapha.
morning. Praise God as our pastor get ready to speak to us. I trust you'll come with your cups turned up with a hope in heart. It doesn't matter what your situation is this morning. Be very expectant of the Lord. And it doesn't matter how hard he preached this morning. If you don't apply the word of God to your life, then nothing will change. But I trust that he speak his word as the word of God declare that God's word will not return void. There is always somebody that heart will be receptive to your word. Put your hands together and receive her pastor in care of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on church. We haven't been together like this in a while. Amen. We should be excited. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord. Amen. To just give him praise, glory, and honor. I thank God for the people of God. I thank God. You may be sitting in the house of the Lord. I thank God to have live music in the house today. Amen. It makes a lot of difference. Amen. To be able to listen to that music live. Amen. It sure brings Amen. A different experience. Amen. To your spirit. And I thank God for that. I personally want to thank God for, amen, what I should say, the addition in the kingdom in this embassy. Amen. Where we represent God and the word of God. I thank God for Brother Jay and Sister Kelly in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. They're, they're, they're here. Amen. To help us. To get better, amen, in worshiping the king, amen, that will be able to come together in unity, amen, because unity shows strength, amen, and I thank God for them, I thank God for what he is about to do, amen, this is our first Sunday, amen, back out, amen, and I thank God for that, I've seen that God has been keeping his people well, amen, he has been keeping his people well, amen, nobody suffer loss, Amen. In this COVID, in this ministry, and to God be the glory. I thank God, amen, for his grace and his protection over us in this time. Amen. I thank God because, you know what, I, 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 I'm very expectant of God. Amen. Because I know greater is yet to come. I, I'm going to say this. I know greater is yet to come. And I thank God that whatever he's doing in this season, I'm a part of it. I want to say this again. I thank God for whatever he's doing in this season. I am a part of it. And I, I don't know about you, but I thank God. When God can use me in whatever, whatever stage, whatever position, whatever function he has given me in this time, in this season, I thank him for it. I honor, for, honor him for it because you know what? The word of God says the least you do for him, it is very precious. In his sight. And I thank God for everyone. I thank God for the support financially and otherwise in the prayers of the saints. Amen. As we keep going and keep believing for great and great things to happen. Even though it, we're not coming together, there's miracles still happening. Hallelujah. I want to say this. There are miracles still happening. 
people have been healed and have been delivered even in this time. Amen. Even though we seem like we're apart, but God is creating a lot of miracles even now in this house. Amen. And I thank God for him that his hands not short. I thank God that wherever we're at, amen, he can do his work if our heart is laid up on him. I thank God for those who are watching online and how oh God has just opened up different platform for us that we can bring the word of God out. And I thank God for that and for everyone here. I just want to stand one more time and we just want to declare the word of the Lord. And we're going to get into the word of God and I pray that you come with your cups turned up, with your minds in the right place to receive from the Lord. Amen. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to take a moment, uh, just a quick moment, just to thank my wife. Amen. For doing what she's doing in the ministry. Amen. She's always seems to be at the back. Amen. But you know what? She's the one that edit all the, the videos and all that and put them on her YouTube channel. So I thank God she's doing a lot of work behind the scene. And we thank God for what she's doing. Amen. For our ministry here. Amen. That the word can get out and keep getting out. Amen. We thank God for that. I just want us to look, amen, continually and uh, what we have started last week. We started to looking at what is philosophy and how it affects our lives. And uh, as we look at philosophy last week, we talk a bit about it. And I tried to lay the foundation, amen, based on what, amen, the world has to say our studies have to say a show about philosophy. And uh, as we look at it this week and continue, we look at uh, what the Bible has to say about it. And we started that l last week and how if our, our philosophy is wrong, then our belief system will be wrong. And if our philosophy is corrupt, then your belief system is going to be corrupt. So in order for us to make sure that our belief systems are in the right place, we got to make sure the source that we are getting our information to build our philosophy, it must be coming from the right source. Because if the source is corrupt, then we are going to be corrupt. Our philosophy is going to corrupt. And if you look at what's going on in the world today, we can see a lot of corruption. Where do you think that's coming from? It's coming from because we have a bad source of information that we build our philosophy on. But when we leave the world, the Bible says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So therefore, when we translate out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom, there must be a change. And Paul says that we need to renew our minds. And in order for us to renew our mind, it may, means we got to change, amen, everything, amen, that we might have learned over the years, might have to make some changes. And Paul did that for us as well. Paul reminds us that everything that he knew and everything that he learned, he had to unlearn them. He called them foolishness because he realized his philosophy wasn't in the right place. It wasn't based on the truth of God's word. So what is philosophy? And the best definition of philosophy is, philosophy is the study of general and fundamental problems, such as those connected with reality, existence, knowledge, value, reason, mind, and language. The word philosophy comes from the ancient Greek word philosophia, which literally means to love wisdom. So who is the one that says, the fear of God is what? The beginning of wisdom. So we got to make sure our source of philosophy is right. And we got to love wisdom. And we need to have the wisdom coming to us from the right place. Because we need something to measure everything that comes into our lives. So our belief system is the measurement that measure, measures everything that will come into our lives. 
Your belief system, it is very, very important. Your belief system, it will shape you. It will make you. It will mold you. Amen. So what is philosophy used for? The purpose of philosophy is to seek and to find truth by debate and reason. It never had another goal. It has three broad divisions, logic, heart, and ethics. And each of these broad divisions has countless divisions. So it's formulated based on three principles. And when we, we got to make sure these three principles are right. If they are not right, then guess what? Everything else is going to be wrong. So four reasons why philosophy is as relevant as ever. One, philosophy is the foundation of critical thinking. We talked about that last week. We won't go back into that. Science can't answer every, que every question. That's number two. Number three, philosophy has particular meaning in the business world. So even the business world, we need to have the right philosophy because in order to get things operating the way it's hard to, then it is very important, even in the business sense, how so? It is very important. Four, ancient philosophers continue to influence humanity. So how important is philosophy? Is because even today, we are still following philosophers that are already dead. They're dead, but their philosophy is still running the world. That's why we have democracy. Democracy, it's running the world. But Plato and Aristotle, they are dead. But the principles are still running, they hurt. So it's very important that our philosophies are very base and a good and strong foundation if we want to do the right thing because philosophy also controls your moral thinking. So it is very important, Church of God, that we understand that. Hallelujah. The source of philosophy first begins with a precept. Then it becomes a concept. Then it becomes an idea or a thought. Then it becomes an ideology, a belief, a thought. Then it becomes a theology, which is the study of God. So when you study the word of God, it is your theology. That's what it means. It's your belief system concerning God. That's what theology is. And number six, philosophy uh, uh, is the way that you think. The philosophy, philosophy helps you to think the way you are to think. And it becomes your mentality. So if you have a bad mentality, it could mean you have a bad philosophy. If you have the right philosophy, then you should have the right mentality. So we, it's very important, church, that we have that. Philosophy, it, be, it, is, it builds our belief system. You cannot become beyond what your belief system says you are. Your belief system, if it's shut down, guess what? That's where you remain. If your belief system is open to new ideas, then guess what? You will grow. Many of us are not growing in the kingdom of God. Why? Because we believe what we believe and that's it. It is final. We don't, we don't care what nobody else says. This is what I believe. And guess what? That belief becomes a stronghold. And when that belief system becomes a stronghold, nothing can break it down. Because you shut yourself off. You come into the house of God and you've been in the house of God for years. But guess what? Because of your belief system, you're not growing. Because why? This I believe this and it's final and this is what I believe. Even that's going to take me to my grave. That's what I believe and I'm going to believe it. Even though the Bible will say it's a different, you're going to believe it. Because we got to be careful. When you have a stronghold, in that stronghold, it creates traditions. And when you have traditions, traditions is hard to be broken. So as people of God, we've got to make sure our philosophy is right. Amen. I want to move on from there very quickly. So definitions and terms have philosophy. Philosophy has multiple de uh, definitions. These are con conceptual definitions and expresses the 
the, con the conception of words. Philosophy is, is a dis discipline in which we analyze the logical grounds of fundamental belief, or particularly in one of three sub-branches. And the first one is ethics, metaphysics, and espiology. The study of the nature of reality is called metaphysics. Question like, what is the nature of the universe? You know, we, we question what is the nature of the universe, but all of that help us to answer, this study help us to answer that question. The study of the nature of truth. We, we need to, to study that so we understand what is truth. Today in the world, they are saying there is no ultimate truth. Isn't it? Everybody is doing what they think is truth according to all their feeling. But there is a source for truth. And we need to get to that source. So it is very important that philosophy helps to shape our lives and our belief system and without it guess what we will have the wrong belief system so we look at philosophy in the bible and the bible encourages us to reason and gives us the fundamental information necessary to answer all the above questions what is the nature of the universe we don't need to go outside of the word of god to know what the Bible says concerning the nature of the universe. What is the nature of the universe? The Bible gives us the answer. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In this verse, it also answers the question, Does God exist? It, it does exist because the Bible says, he is the one that created the heavens and the earth. So we can, we don't have to go further to ask to, for that question to be answered. Because we believe the word of God, it is inspired. Is this the inspired word of God? It is our constitution that we live by as a church. So therefore, when we take the word of God, we got to take it seriously. And we got to find our answers in the word of God, not according to the philosophy of the world, but according to the constitution of the word of God. And this is our constitution that we are to follow. So the verse also answered the question, does God exist? What is the true nature of God? The Bible gives the answer for that. God is all powerful, all knowing, omnipresent, triune spirit. Genesis 17 verse 1 and when Adam was 90 years old and nine the Lord prepared, uh, appeared to Adam and said unto him I am the almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect you know I, I, I've read this scripture so many times and uh, when I listen to many ministers and pastors that preach saying that we can't be perfect but we can't be perfect by ourselves. But the Bible says to Abraham, these are our forefathers, walk before me. Walk before me and be what? Thou perfect. So God, he's not saying we're perfect, but it means to be matured in things. It's not mean perfect the way the world sees perfect, but is that we continually work in and maturing towards perfection. So in order for us to ha that to happen in our lives, we have to walk according to his principles, and we're gonna walk according to the word of God, and that's what, we will work towards perfection. We can't do it by ourselves, we can't do it by human theology and human thinking, we gotta do it by the word of God. Nothing is left out of our constitution for us to live a successful life in this world. The problem we're having is we want to have our own way. We want to have a part of the kingdom and a part of the world. And they don't mix. You're going to make a choice. Are you for God? Or are you for the world? Joshua said, as for me and my house, I will do what? 
serve the Lord. So therefore, he's saying that he's putting off everything that has nothing to do with God and he's going to serve God. He's not going to allow the world to take over his thinking. He is going to serve God. As for he and his house, he is going to serve the Lord. I would like to make that declaration in this house. Amen. That as Father, according to the word of God, we are going to serve the Lord. We're not going to worry about what man thinks. We won't worry about traditions. We are going to worry about the word of God. If it does not line up with the word of God, then guess what? We got to throw it out. It is bad philosophy. It is bad belief system. We got to re revamp our belief system by abiding by the word of God. Nothing else. Paul said, everything else, it is done. And Paul was a very eloquent man. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was well versed in the laws of the land and also in religion. But he said it was all foolishness when he came in contact with the true knowledge of the word of God. And therefore, because of that, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Want to make sure that we that are following, he said, as he follow Christ, we should follow him. So he left his writing so that the church of the living God will be able to follow his teaching along with the other apostles and Jesus Christ, our king. Who is your king today? Who are you worshiping? Hallelujah. So Psalms 147 verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and of great power is understanding is infinite. So we, we, when we're in God, all understanding is in God. It is infinite. We need, don't need to go outside of God to find information. All the information is in him. Because he is infinite. Hallelujah. So let's go over to where we had last week and we talked about the Bible gives us um, the answer for what is the nature of man. So if we want to know what is the nature of man, guess what we should be doing? We should be looking to the word of God. Today the world is in trouble because we get our information from the wrong source. And the Bible says, so the answer to what is the nature of man is man is a creation of God and has been made in God's image both male and female but has rebelled against God and is now sinful by nature today we are sinful by nature Genesis 1 26 27 says and God said let us made man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the falls of the here and over the cattle and over all the herd and over every creeping things that creepeth upon the herd. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female created he him. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 and 7 states, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took off the fruit thereof, and did eat, and give also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them were open. And they, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves an apron. Also in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed unto all men, for that all have sinned. Hallelujah. So when we look at the word of God, the Bible answers the question, what is man? 
Or who is man? We know that he was created by God in God's own image. But the Bible says we sin against God. And because we sin against God today, what God has created actually was not for man to sin. That's why he commanded him not to eat of this particular fruit or the, in the garden. But they disobeyed God. And because of that, man fall. And guess what? Today we have sin in the world. Today we have to deal with sickness. Today we have to deal with all these things that happen in the world. Amen. Because of our disobedience. Today, the world is to the disobedience to the word of God. That's why we're having so much chaos. That's why there's so many things happening. We're having this march today because of all this. Because of the sin that comes into the hurt. Because in the origin, man was not supposed to have dominion over man. They were supposed to have dominion over the cockles, over the sea, over the fish of the sea, the falls of the here. So man should not have dominion over man in the first place. But today we are seeking that, don't we? So you see, our philosophy is wrong right there. Because if our philosophy was according to the word of God, we would not try to have dominion over man. Man would never become slaves in the first place because we all will see ourselves as a man. There will be no such thing as a black man, a white man, a yellow man, a pink man, because the Bible did not say he made any of that man. All he made was a man in his own image. So today, all the inrate, the racial justice and all that's going on, it has nothing to do with God. It has, does, it has all to do with man because they allow sin to conquer their lives. Our philosophy is not according to the word of God because we would not have hate. Because we're born to love each other. We would not be looking at each other's color. Whether you're black, pick on one, you look as a man as a man. And I always thank God for that. I've never looked at myself as a black man. I look at myself as a man. Hallelujah. I believe I have as, as much potential as any other man. And I always grew up with that mentality. Never to feel like anybody is higher than I am. I always believe that I can do anything anybody else can do. Because that's who I am. I'm a man. The Bible says, I'm a man. It doesn't matter what you look like. As long as you carry the stuff I'm carrying, you're a man. And, and that's the way I live my life. And that's the way I try to help my kids to live their life so they don't feel like anybody, they're so in, in, so inferior to anybody. Because this is very important. Today when you look at the house of God, there's inferiority even in the house of God. So this is a, 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 a man thing. And until man repent... And come to the word of God, the changes that they want to happen is never going to happen. Because nobody can change the heart of a man except God. We can change the constitution, we can change all the writings, we can put all that in place. But the only time we're going to get the world to come together in the way that we are to, because we got to change our heart. Amen. We can change all the writings, we can do all that, but what's in the heart is in the heart. And only God can change the heart. So what the world and what the church need to help the world to understand, if we want real changes, we need to make a change and we need to come to God. Because God's the one that's going to bring ultimate change in the world. So because he designs it, that we all should be men. We all should be women. We should not be any, there should not be any difference. But the world see it different. Why? Because the philosophy, their upbringing, their teaching were wrong. It was never according to scriptures. So the world is suffering today. Amen. Hallelujah. And we cannot call it whatever they want to call it. We have the wrong philosophy. Our belief system is not right. Because we believe we are better than others. As it's not according to the word of God. We are all, all the same to him. We all were created in his own likeness, in his own image. Amen. And we can't change that. Today we are trying to change who God said we were, we were made to be. He said he made male and female. But today because of our belief system, our philosophy, man want to be woman, woman want to be man. You know, so it's because of our philosophy and our belief system, the world is suffering and then want to blame God. We need to point the finger back at us. That's not abiding according to the constitution that has been left in the world for us to follow. 
We are creating our own constitution and we're moving away from what the word of God says should be happening in our lives. If you buy a Benz, would you take your Benz to a Toyota dealer? You wouldn't do that because you're in for trouble. Wouldn't it be? You buy a nice expensive car and you want to take it to a Toyota dealer or some guy who's not qualified. You got to go back to the manufacturer if you want the best result. They're the one who designed it. God designed man. He's the one who shaped us. So everything that is happening in the world, it should be go we should be going back to God, but except we're moving away from God, guess what? Because our philosophy and our belief system is off. It's not according to scriptures. So the Bible also gives us the foundation for answering and his theology claims that is the nature of truth. The truth answer, the, the answer is truth. Truth is not which, truth is that which corresponds to the mind of God. So what is truth? Truth is what is correspond to the mind of God. So you can only find truth if it's connected to the minds of God. Where is the mind of God? It is in the word of God. That's why Paul said you got to renew your mind and you can only renew your mind through what? Studying the word of God. So therefore, our mind, if we want a truth, it must be corresponded to God. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he was making a philosophical, amen, claim. That's what they were doing in John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That was a philosophical claim he was making so that we understand where truth lies. Truth can never lie outside the word of God. And it's always so crazy for me when the church of the living God, we have the truth. But we refuse to let the world know that we have the truth. We want to condone the things that the Bible says we should not condone in the house. So what are we doing? We're agreeing with the world and we are disagreeing with God. God has given us a constitution. We are not living by it. We are ready to settle for what God's word did not say that we should do, we are ready to settle for it because it makes us feel important. But in the word of God, we, if we want to make sure that we have truth, we must get into the word of God. And if we don't study the word of God, guess what? We won't know what is truth. We need to have the word of God in us so that we will know what is truth. Because when you have the word of God in you, you will see a lie. Oh gosh. If you want to know the truth, you got to have the word of God. Because if you don't know that something is true, then you won't know the difference. You won't know the lies. That's why Paul said you must study to show yourself a proof. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He wants us to have the knowledge of what truth is. So when we see a lie, we know what a lie looks like. Why is Paul warning us against that? Because he says in this word that the devil is a liar from the beginning. So if you don't know truth, you will never be able to identify lies but when you your belief system is built correctly according to God's philosophy God's word not Aristotle not any of these Plato not any of these men you got to look at the word of God and you got to shape your belief system according to that Do you realize that in the early years in when I was a young man things were way different and as we grow with more knowledge, we're supposed to grow stronger and better. But guess what? We're starting to become more destructive because it's become man's theology. It's not about the word of God. You know, as a young man, it, it, we're encouraged always in the school where we had to go to, to religious, religious studies. Today, the, the young people don't have that. They don't want to even talk about God. They want to talk about evolution. The, the world has changed and it's only... The plan of the devil to destroy God's people. It's time that God's people get it right. 
and start to make the change from the government, from the heads of government to the smallest member of parliament. We need to get to that place. If we want to change, we got to get into the word of God to make these changes happen. You can't change it. The prime minister can't change it. The president cannot change it. Nobody can change it because God says it's going to happen. The, God, the Bible says in the last day, man become lovers of themselves. The Bible says mother will be against daughter. Father will be against son. The Bible speaks about these things. The love of man is going to wax cold. So in order for us to get where we need to be, it means that we need to get back to our constitution, get back to the word of God if we want changes. We can demonstrate and they will change legislator and all the, the, the different things they need to change and try to change the law and all that kind of stuff, but the heart must change if we want change. I want to tell the world this. If you want change, you got to change your thinking. You got to repent. Get the right philosophy. Get the Bibles back in the school. Get the kids educated in the right way. So that they have the right philosophy in them. They'll have a conscience. They're going to have something that they're wrestling with. That when they see wrong. They, they're going to be something say that is wrong. We got to get back to that place church of God. Where the Bible speaks. Where the Bible speaks in the church. And from the church it should expel into the community and in the world. If we want changes. We got to make sure that. The heart of man change because the Bible says the heart of man become wax cold. It means they have no feelings. It means it's nothing for a man to kill you. It doesn't matter. They don't have no heart. Their heart become a heart of stone. But if they come to Christ, it, the, he promised that he will change a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. So our philosophy has to be right and you got to get in line with the word of God. Do you know you can ask somebody to kneel and they're kneeling in flesh but their heart is still standing. <laughs> Not because a person kneels, it doesn't mean that he's, he's okay in the heart. It is just something that is just a show. <laughs> It is just a show. We can kneel as much as we want. But is our heart broken? Is our heart kneel as you kneel in the physical? We can kneel in the physical, but get what? Our heart is standing up, fighting. Kneeling doesn't represent a thing. Because the heart is what matters. You got to change your heart. Change your belief system. Change the thinking. No government can do that for you. No prime minister can do that for you. No member of parliament can do that for you. There is only one person that can change that. His name is Jesus Christ. We can march as we want. We can do all that we want. We can write it as much as we want. That's not going to change a thing. The only thing that cause changes is that the world repent and turn from their wicked ways. Turn to God that can take the heart of stone and turn it into heart of flesh. Look at Brother Paul. He was a murderer. And God changed his heart. Oh, hallelujah. And he himself that what he was fighting against, he became his. We can demonstrate, we can do all that. And I'm not saying you don't do that, but I'm saying the church and the world need to know that we need to get back to God. If we want changes, we need the heart of man to change. There's not no constitution, nothing that you put in place gonna change the heart of man. It's only God gonna change the heart of man. There are murderers that are in prison, and while they're there, God touched them and there came out a new man. Hallelujah, church of God. So God is what we need in this time. God is what we need to reach out to. We need people to change and come back to God.
We need the prime ministers and the government and the, 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 all the heads of government to go back to what God says we should be doing. Let man be man. And let God be God. Allow God to reign. That's what we need in this world, in this time. Hallelujah. The church of the living God should be right here in this time, in all of this. It's trying to help the world to understand what we need. It's not a more march. We have been marching for age, for generation to generation. What we want is more God. Many of our forefathers died in this march and we never get anything out of it. All is going to die down. We're going to go right back to square one because the heart of men, that's what the Bible says, become desperately wicked. That's what needs to change is the heart of men from the prime minister right back down to the member of parliament. That's what needs to happen, church. We need to get back to God. Jesus is truth because he corresponds perfectly to the mind of God since God since he was God in the flesh Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says for in him church of God for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead the Bible also make numerous ethical claim it implicitly defines right as that which is correspond to the approval of God. So if you want to have right, God has to approve with it. It must be approved by scripture if you want right. You can't just take something out of nowhere and try to make it right. You got to go to the word of God to make it right. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 25 to 29 says... Yet he says, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? God's ways equal. He sees all as one. But our ways, we see each other unequal. God is saying, come back to me. We start to have the mind of Christ in you. So we start seeing man the way God see man, as a man. And then we're going to treat him right, according to the word of God. Because your ways, we look at an individual and equal to us, based on our color, based on our status, based on our job description. We look at all of this, but God look at you as a man. That's what it is, church. Hallelujah. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and dead in them for his iniquity that he had done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he had committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. So this is what the world needs today. Is to change their belief system, change their philosophy, get back to where God says we should be, so that according to His word, in His eyes, we are equal. And because He is equal, and we know that God says we are equal, then we can join with God, and everybody will become equal according to the word of God. We will change our minds and get ourselves back to that place. That we can see equality and justice. That we all will see each other as we are to see each other. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 28 said, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgression that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet said, yet said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? It's a question. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think that you have it? Do you think that the world is going to look at everybody as equal? The church and the kingdom of God, we should see each other as equal. But even the church, we have division. 
Even in the church. Do you see why the world struggle with the church? Because even the church, we have division. Even the church, we don't see each other as men and women of God. We still see colors. I heard churches have different color choirs, different, I'm this choir, I'm that choir, I'm that. No, we are in the kingdom of God. We are citizens in the kingdom. We are all equal. There should be nothing that show segregation in the kingdom of God because we are all equal. The Bible says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We are all one. But even in the body of Christ, there is division. So what do, the, what do we expect the world to do? If we are supposed, we're called to be an example. We are called to be the light of this world. A city that is set on a hill. But if we're not being the light, then guess what? We can't expect to put out darkness. In order for us to put out darkness, we have to be the light. We're going to follow the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God's ways are right. And anyone, anyone who divert from God's ways are morally wrong. Church of God, God's ways, it is always right. And anyone who deviates from God's ways, they are wrong, morally and otherwise. So when the government is not following the word of God and not allowing the word of God to be taught, to the people, young children, and all that, guess what? Then the world is going to become morally wrong because their philosophy and their belief system is going to build on a wrong system, wrong philosophy, and we will never be able to stop what's going on in this world unless we get our belief system in the right place so that man starts to think the way they are at the thing, and that can only happen if we come in line with the word of God. That's the only way it's going to happen, church of God. Isaiah 58 verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his ways. Church of God. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto what? The Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and for he will abundantly Pardon, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. That's the problem. Your ways, your philosophy, your belief system, is this not right? We need to get our philosophy and our belief system back intact. Hallelujah. The commandments of scriptures give specific instance of those things of which God approves or does not approve. The Bible encourages us to defend the faith. In Jude 1 verse 3, the Bible said, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly Contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. First Peter 3 verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. There's the problem. The hearts aren't right. We got to get our hearts sanctified. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you with, with meekness and fear. To reason with unbelievers, the Paul, Acts chapter 7 says, we need to let unbelievers know what we have. We need to let them know we have the truth. We're afraid to stand up and defend the truth. How much of us as a church going out there and march and telling the world that they need Christ? Look how many people out there fighting 
for life, black life matter. How come the church is not going out there and marching? How come all the church don't come together and go out and march and let the world see unity in the body of Christ and to send the word out that we need a heart transplant. We need Jesus Christ in you. The church of God needs to come together all over the world and stand in solidarity to the word of God and let the world know that there is a God and the only way change is going to come is if the world change and transform to the world of God. That's the only way we're going to have what we are looking for. The world should come together. All the churches in all the world should come together and march so that they can see that we are in unity with God's word and change will start to happen. But today... The church's focus is on fame and fortune. So that's why it is my church. <laughs> and you give it your name. Because it must identify with you because it's your church. When it's God's church, it is God's church. And we can combine and unite. Because it is the kingdom of God that is uniting. But when it's your church, it is your job, it is your business, it is your empire. It has nothing to do with God. You're hiding under the shadow of Christianity and said that you're in the kingdom, but you're not in the kingdom because you're sowing this God. Among brethren. And the Bible says he hates it. We need to unite as a church. So the world could see unity in the church. And then true unity in the church. They can see the light of God function in the church. And the world's going to want to be of what the church has. But today. We are just as bad as anybody else. Huh? There should be people marching against us too. Because what's out there in the world is in the church. What makes us any special? The Bible says we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are called out. We are set apart to be a light in the world. Everything the world does, we are involved in it. We want to become a part of it. Well, we are called out of the world. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out one. We are a light must shine before men that they see our good works and come to glorify the Father which is in heaven. But when the world look at the church, all they can see is a bunch of hypocritical people who is after their money, who is after their finances. We need to get back to where the word of God stand predominate in the church and the church unite as the world is uniting even today. Because if we want change, we got to get God in the hearts of the people. If we want changes, we got to get God in the hearts of the people. And to preach the gospel, Matthew 28. This is the commission that given to the church. Go ye therefore. Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. You, you realize the Bible is specific. He didn't look at everybody. Everybody is included. Not some. Go ye therefore. Teach all nations. That's the responsibility of the church of the living God. All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'll, <laughs> I'll be with you, even unto the end of the world. That's what the world needs, church. We want to see a big solidarity march around the world to let the world know that God is real. 
Let them see that everything that's happening in the world today, the Bible said was going to happen. <laughs> There's a saying, two wrong don't make right. But if the church of the living God would stand up even in this time and stand up for God and let the world know what we need is God. What we need is the love of God. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what we need, church. Praise the name of Jesus. God created us to be rational creatures, to think about the nature of the universe, truth and morality. But not everyone does it well, even though we all have a philosophy. A few of the universe, a few of the universe, truth and ethics. Unfortunately, most people have a belief system that is contrary to the word of God. That's a problem. Unfortunately, we have a belief system that is contrary to the word of God. And what, and that is the problem. The problem is not philosophy, but unbelief philosophies and way of thinking that is contrary to God's words is empty. If you have a philosophy that is contrary to God's word, it is empty. It is useless. It is ultimately foolishness. It is fruitile and lead to destruction. What's going on in this world today is destruction going on. Why? Because we have the wrong philosophy. Everything is based on the wrong philosophy. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 says, There is a way that seems right unto a man. By the hand thereof are the ways of death. Huh? If our philosophy, it might seem right to you, but that way, the Bible says, is going to lead to death. Do you know sin is the mother of death? Sin is the mother of death. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory. But because we have made a change, some of us make that conscious decision to receive Jesus Christ. In our life. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what we need. What the world needs is Jesus Christ. What the world needs is to change their belief system and get it connected to the word of God. Get it rearranged throughout foolishness, throughout man's teaching, throughout man's tradition, and start applying the word of God to your life. The day you start applying the word of God to your life, we don't need to have the police officers. Think about it for a moment, church. If we're applying the word of God, if every citizen were applying the word of God to our lives, we would need the police officers. We wouldn't need them, would they? Because we all would be in unity, living according to the principles. When one is about to do something wrong, the other one would be right there to correct and say, no, that's not right. That's not right. Today the love of man was cold. That man stand watch man die. And Paul is an example of that. Remember Paul? He was, stand, he was the one throwing his coat down to give order to kill Christians. But when you see the light of God. 
Oh, hallelujah. The light of God can change you. That's the only thing going to change the heart of man. Paul was a murderer. He was given command to kill. But God met him. And he has a change of heart. And because he has a change of heart, he encouraged the world to change. And he said, in order for us to change, we got to renew our minds. That's what we need today. The minds of God's people. From the president, the prime ministers, down to the members of parliament. They need to have a heart transplant. That's what they need. The police force need a heart transplant. The criminals need a heart transplant. And when we all get the right heart transplant, then we can expect changes. Until then, the word of God, it is going to fulfill. Because the Bible says it's not by might. <laughs> you can fight as much as you want. But it's not by might. Or by power. It is only by the spirit of God. That this world is going to change. That the heart of man is going to change. It is not by demonstration. It is not by showing how powerful you are. It is by changing your heart. And allow the spirit of God to saturate your life. He is the one that's going to make the changes that the world desires. So that's what we need, church. We need to have a Nineveh experience. Oh, hallelujah. When everybody throw down themselves in the presence of God and ask God to intervene in their lives and bring changes to their hearts. And then we're going to have the change. Until then, they're going to be murders. There's going to be fighting. There's going to be racial injustice. All that going to continue right until he returns. Because the Bible says before one of his word pass, heaven and hurt is going to pass. So I would encourage the churches around the world, the kingdom citizens around the world to contend for your faith. Let the world know what they need. What they need is Christ. The government need to get the police for safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. But they create us to kill each other. It's not going to stop until the spirit of God come back to this hurt to claim his own. So until then, let the church need to come together and let the world know that they need God. Amen. They need a heart transplant. And that can only happen through the spirit of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? No. But you got a bond of the water, the spirit and the blood and the blood already been shed they will pray that the table have already been spread and that's what the world needs if we need changes god grace be with you god cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace god bless you all father in the name of jesus i thank you god for everything that you have done and said in this house today i thank you god for those who are watching online I thank you, mighty God, for all the things that are happening around the world, mighty God. I pray in all of this that people will look up. Because the Bible says when these things are happening, we should look up. Because redemption draws at night. I, my mighty God, I believe, Father God, that if your people, mighty God, will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, your promise you will hear from heaven and you will heal their land. So, Father, I believe, mighty God, for the prime ministers, mighty God, the presidents, mighty God, and everyone around the world, mighty God, that will seek your face 
And mighty God, they will make changes according to the principle, the biblical principle that you have given us. Mighty God, to rule over, to, 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 for, to help us, God, to, to have dominion and to be able to walk this earth the way we are to mighty God. That we'll walk with equality to each other. None of us is higher than every other and each other. We are all made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Both made, male and female. We all are one in Christ. We all are one in Christ. And we, as the church, we need to do our part in helping the world to understand that the word of God is fulfilling even now. And they must make a change. And the change they need to make is run for their life. Run to God. Run to God. Run to God. Run to God for everything. It will heal you. It doesn't matter what happened. It will heal you. It doesn't matter what sins you have committed. He is here to heal you. He is here to make a difference in your life. So I believe God, amen, that the world today will look to the source the source, the source that make you in his own image. The source that knows every blood vessel, every cell, every... He said he even numbered the hairs on your head. That's the place that we need to look to. That's the place we need to go back to. We need to get a spiritual heart transplant that will change the heart of man. That it will not be so desperately wicked. They'll have a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. We praise God today for the word of God. We thank God for his word. We thank God for Jesus Christ who came into this world for no sins of his own, but to help us, to redeem, reconcile us back to himself that one day where he is, we will be there also. So we thank God for everyone and for everything that has been done today. And I pray God's strength. I pray for the bereaved family. I pray for those who are suffering loss even in this pandemic. Those who are, are, are suffering, mighty God, losses, even this, but the brother who died, brother Floyd who died, and I pray, God, for his family as well. I pray, mighty God, that the people around the world will recognize what we really need. It's not more demonstration. We need the world to know that we need God. We need more of God in our lives. God will make the difference. He will make the changes that is required. If we all come together and work towards the same goal, according to the kingdom of God, according to our biblical constitution, our philosophy will be right, our thought process will be right, because out of our heart, out of our thoughts, flow the issues of life. We'll have a different thinking. we have to process things differently if we allow the word of God to dwell in us. So, Father God, bless us today. Bless our people. Bless your people abundantly, Father God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God.